Here we are for another fun-filled episode of Brett nervously talking to the camera. Uh, I want to start this out. I want to thank my friend Tommy. And Tommy, I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. I've been meaning all this time, last couple of years, to ask you how you pronounce it. But I think it's Gazelle. Um, Tommy's a horseman in on the eastern seaboard somewhere. I think the Carolinas. And he, he made me these little rain connectors. He made me a whole bunch of them. And they're just the handy dandiest little guys. You run them through like that. And it, that part attaches to your bridle. And then this little button slips through there and attaches to your rein. And they're just awesome. And he built me a whole bunch of them. And I wanted to, to thank him for that. Thank you so much, Tommy. And he also built me this little guy right here. And I think this is an ear cleaner. I think that's what that's for. Uh, but I'm not sure. So that's where I wanted to start it. But what we're doing here today is we've got a whole bunch of questions. We get lots and lots and lots of questions. Yeah, and uh, so once in a while, I sit down and answer a handful of them. And I wrote them down here. Um, and the first one was, they, why do you always wear white shirts? And that's kind of a funny one. It's because I'm nuts. And if all my shirts are the same color, then I don't have to stand in front of the closet for 10 minutes trying to decide which color of shirt to wear. Uh, and I say I'm nuts because even at that, I have all white shirts. I still have my favorite white shirt and my least favorite white shirt. So that's just part of it. But uh, the other thing with it is I, I work with animals and livestock and it's easier for them to see. I, I can't ever blame one for not noticing me if I'm wearing a white shirt. They darn sure see me. Our next question was my opinion on correction bits. And on, on that deal, there was also a, a secondary question from somebody else of rain handling in a correction bit versus a different kind of bit. So my opinion on correction bits. I don't like correction bits. I don't know that anybody really does like correction bits. We've all got a couple of them. They're a handy tool. They're a tool that I don't want to use. Um, so I'll kind of explain that. I'll try to make it as quick as possible. A correction bit, everybody's familiar with them. They, they break on the cheeks and in the mouth. Uh, to me, there's so much going on with that. There's, there's just too much action. And I really, I've never seen a horse that, that really liked them. All horses ride in them, but not very many horses really like them. Um, and I think that's partially due to the fact that there's so much going on. The second part of that with, with all the different ways to hinge is that then it affords you the ability to use a direct rein with a bridle on. And that's what a correction bit is for. Uh, in my mind, I always call them fix it bits because you're using them to fix something that you screwed up earlier. That's what it's for is to use that direct rein and help that horse. And I don't like that because then you will, and you'll you'll get you'll get in the habit, and the horse will get in the habit of always using a direct rein to help that horse, rather than using a neck rein and getting them getting them really broke. Um, so a correction bit's a crutch. I don't like to use them, but sometimes you break your leg and you need a crutch. So I I have two of them. Um, both of them are made by. Uh, Daryl Davis, fantastic pit maker in Texas. Uh, both of them are made by Daryl, and and when I when I need them, that's the thing I need, and I, when I want them, that's the thing I want to use. What a correction bit also does that, that a lot of people don't think about. Um, picture the tongue relief in a, in a correction bit. Again, tongue relief is something that I think a whole lot of people have uh, fallen victim to the idea that that the word relief is in there. And so uh, we want to think that it's relieving to the horse when in fact it's relief like on a topographical map. Uh, so the relief is somewhere for the tongue to go. When you pull on that bit, the tongue goes into that port, into that tongue relief, and then it no longer protects the bars of their mouth. The tongue no longer protects the bars of the mouth. And so the bit has direct action right on the bars of the mouth. Um, so in terms of severity and generally speaking, I try not to say, well, one bit severe and another bit's not severe, blah, 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 blah. 
because that's not the case. It, it has to do with who's pulling on it. But uh, correction bit offers the opportunity to be a lot more severe without meaning to. Um, that, that's why so many horses ride in them and they go, well, my horse rides better than this. Yeah, it's because you can hurt him more in it. So a correction bit to me is it's not a thing I want to use. It's not a thing that I like. Um, but but they're out there and, and we all do use them at some point. In terms of rain handling uh, with a correction bit versus any other kind of bit, this, the question was specifically spade bits, uh, but it doesn't have to be a spade versus any other kind of bit. You should, when you're riding it like a bridle, you should handle your reins exactly the same as you do in a bridle. Uh, you should be within your steering box and, and you should handle your reins the same way. Like I said, the correction bit offers you the opportunity to use direct rein to help that horse around, which you dang sure don't want to do in a spade bit, uh, just because the spade will cut their mouth if you do. So that's kind of the my opinion on correction bits and how to use them. I don't want to use them, and when I do use them, I use them as sparingly as I possibly can. That is not one of my questions in here, but it brought up something. I heard uh, another guy talking, because guess what? I watch YouTube videos too. I heard another guy talking, and he was saying that the, that the corners of the mouth, the lips, and the tongue are more sensitive than the bars, and this just... It absolutely breaks my heart to hear somebody say that, especially somebody that is in an authoritative role. Uh, no, the bars are way, 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 way more sensitive than any other part of that horse's mouth. I think some people get that misconception because of all, all the nerves, nerve endings in their tongue and in their mouth. And yeah, they've got a lot of feeling in it. There's, there's a lot of nerves there um, versus in the bars of their mouth where it's, just real thin skin and then bone there's not as many nerve endings but there's nothing to protect those bars either and the, and the bars are actually a really tiny thin piece of bone that's that's on the the uh, bottom jaw and they're really really easy to crush it's really easy to break that little bit of bone like really really easy um, and so the, the bars are incredibly sensitive I'm not going to get real deep into it, but if anybody tells you that the tongue or the lips are the most sensitive part, no, absolutely not. Or nor the palate. The bars are the most sensitive part. And and we need to keep that in mind with our bits. That their tongue is there to protect their bars from our mouth. So hence anytime you get tongue relief, you're taking that away. So I'm I'm kind of not a tongue relief guy. Mm -hmm.